Swinburne University of Technology. Hi and welcome to Swinburne Codecasts. I'm Andrew Kane. And I'm Jake. And in this video, we'll be looking at creating our own modules. So far, we've been writing all of our program's code in a single file. And that's been really cool so far. But wouldn't it be great if we were able to split our code into multiple files so that we could not rewrite it every time we needed to use it? Yeah, and we can use modules to do that. So modules are going to allow us to sort of separate our code into different files. Then yep. each file can have sort of a different purpose. And so if you wanted to, if you had a bunch of code that you were reusing over and over again, you could put that all in a single file and then just use that file across your different projects. Yeah, so I don't need to re write my file my code every time i need to use it i could just say use this code yeah. that i've written in this file i wrote it once and i can use it every time yeah that's right and i mean the cool thing with that is you don't have to say copy and paste the code in if you then find a mistake you yeah. can fix it in that one file fix it once, and it'll fix sort it of everywhere. compile your other programs and they'll all be fixed yeah perfect yeah. cool so is there any code that you have been reusing or that we've been reusing so far yeah, so read string and read integer, those those functions that we've been using to read from the terminal, I've used those in a lot of programs. Yeah, so they've all been programmed into a separate module. And we can actually have a look at how that module works. Now, modules, when we create them, have two parts. The first part defines the, the interface of the module. And this is a list, basically it's just a list of all of the functions, procedures, variables if we had them, which we wouldn't, of course, because they'd be global. Uh, <laughs> the functions and procedures uh, that we want to make available to others. So they all go in the interface. We don't say how they work here. We just say what they are. So it's kind of like, this is what I can do, and this is, and, I, and I'll be able to do everything that I've listed here. Yeah, so the, it's like advertising. Yeah. This is... Hello, this, this is, is what I do. This is, this is what I have to sell. <laughs> roll up, roll up, use my read string. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's the best on the block. Yeah, that's right. So in our terminal user input unit, we've got read string. Yeah, read integer, read double. Yeah, et cetera. Read. Yeah, so that is the list of uh, functions in this case that are available from this unit. If you use this unit, that's what you've got access and to. And it also defines any parameters it needs and what it will return. Yeah, so these are all functions. So what parameters go in, what func what values come yeah. back. If it was a procedure, obviously it wouldn't return anything. Yeah, you just say it, it takes these parameters. Yeah. Yeah. If so any. The, yeah, that's correct, if any. Now, the second part, once you've defined the interface, you then need to provide that implementation. Yeah, we, yeah. No, no hollow salesman here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can't say I've you got a read string. You follow up now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you got, if you've said you're going to have read string <laughs> somewhere, you actually have to implement it. Yeah. And so that goes in the implementation section. And these are just like, if you look at this, this is just like the code you would have had previously inside the program. Yeah, there's just no difference. Yeah, absolutely. The only thing that matters is that each of the things you said you were going to have exist in here. Yeah, it has to be the exact same name so that it yeah. knows. And the exact same parameters, yeah. same yeah. types, everything. Same, same function and procedure, basically. Yeah. And, but here we define the instructions, the steps that those, those functions and procedures perform. Yeah. You can also have other functions and procedures that you don't advertise. So you could have local ones that you yeah. use, but other people shouldn't use. Yeah, exactly. Uh, if you had some sort of intermediate steps. Yeah, something only useful to this module. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and then they would go inside here. Yeah. So then what we can do, if we pop back to another program, uh, we can see here, this is an example of how we use that that module that we've created. So here we, we're able to import the module and that gives us access to all of the functions and procedures inside that. And then you've got to make yeah. sure when you compile it, it's compiling both. Yeah. Some languages will do that automatically for you. Others you have to provide the implementation yeah. for both. We need to say compile this, this, this. Yeah. So on. yeah, yeah. Either the compiler does works it out for you or you have to do it yourself. Yeah. yeah. All right, that's it for... Modules? Modules are super simple. I mean, it is yeah. really just a case of copying and pasting your code into different files and saying what you're going to provide. But they're really powerful because it means we don't have to repeat code. Yep. And if we find, uh, as you said, if we find fixes, we fix it once, we fix it everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. So now you can, if you want to do, if you've got a bunch of functions or procedures that you think, wow, these could be really useful across a lot of different yeah, projects. Yeah, I'm using this so much, I should make this a module. Yeah. You can chuck it in a module, reuse it everywhere else. Yeah. So next up, we think we should ha have a look at our records and enums videos. Yeah, so they're ways of organizing data. Uh, another one would be to have a look at file.io because that would then be a way of saving that data into file as well. Yeah. 
All right, I hope you've enjoyed this video and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye. This has been a Spindle production.